Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. I'm super excited for this episode of ADHD because we got we got a fucking legend in the building. We got we got a legend sitting. Across <laughs> yeah. Young Blood is on the show Yo! today. How are ya, dude? I'm excellent, and I'm so excited that we're doing this. And, Same. Uh, and I don't know we kept talking. We've been talking oh, bro, about this. It's been this. a while, hasn't it? It was just literally like it's just had to happen. Yeah, but dude, you're just one of those guys that has amazing energy. Just you know? I, just literally, I always say like good old ADHD and Dr Pepper. Exactly. So. <laughs> I'm just in. I just feel like you, you the get, right place. Yeah, yeah, I just feel like you get me, you know? Ditto. Yeah. It was kind of crazy from the first, like, meeting. I was like, you can kind of tell when someone's one of your kind. You know what I mean? No, for real. And I just think it's kind of, it was kind of interesting. Like, I was like, whoa, he doesn't look at me funny because I'm being a nutcase when everyone else just, like, looks at me like I'm daft. Well, see, that's me. You know that's what I mean? Me. Completely. Yeah. I'm always, I feel like I'm just the oddball and like, I'm just always the fucking weird one. Totally. Or just, or just, you're just being completely a hundred mile an hour all the time. And everyone's just around you. Like chill, dude. Everyone always thinks I'm on drugs. Yeah. You know what I mean, oh yeah. Ton, tons of people. Have, it's have so have funny. Like every single interview or, or public show, appearance. like public appearance I'm on, someone just is in the comment box. who's just like, oh man, he's definitely on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, man, I, I'm actually not. How does it feel though? Because I mean, now you know you're at, you're at a point in your career and your life like where you're being rewarded, yeah, you know, very like just in, in, an insane amount for being yourself. That that's crazy. Feel, that must feel good. That's what's crazy because that's kind of the whole foundation of of young blood. You know what I mean? It was like it was just giving me an outlet where I could meet people who would behave and act and feel in a similar way to me because I didn't have that. You know what I mean? So it's like, what do you say when you can't, like, I just want to build my own community. Do you mm. know what I mean? When you haven't got your own road, when you haven't got your own lane, just build your own. Yeah. When you've got nowhere to run down, just build a road. You know what I mean? And I was just like- Do people look at you like you were fucking crazy? Oh, completely. I remember playing my mum for some of the first songs. She's like, no one's going to like this. It's very rude. I was like, mom, it's just like what I feel in my head. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like what is inside my mind. And I don't know. It was kind of weird. The less I started giving a fuck and caring, the more I was just releasing stuff that I wanted to release. That's when everyone started kind of listening to, pay to attention. me. To pay attention because it is that. you. I moved out of London at 16. I moved out of the capital at 16 to kind of try and... I have a crack at being a rock and roll star. You know what I mean? And it's very easy to conform to a way that society should put you, uh, to a box that society should put you in, in order to make people like you or to be accepted or to kind of fit in, in inverted commas. And I don't know, the, I, the less I did that and the less I cared about that, the better life got. You know what I mean? And it was weird because you almost have to like die a little to like survive a bit. You know what I mean? Well, I'm sure, you know, when you move out at 16, I'm sure you've you've had to go through some crazy shit. Yeah. You know, like, I, I mean, I know that like I didn't have a steady place to sleep for a few years, oh, you know? And dude. I was like living out of a backpack. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like literally like when I first, I remember I moved down and- I found this room that was well cheap with a, a lady called Marge. Okay. And she was really like, this was a kind of a first period where a, a, someone really didn't like me. I was like, I'd be out all the time. Because I was 16, I just moved to the city and I was like, sick, man, I can do what I want. And um, I was kind of glass collecting in a pub, like picking glasses up. You know what I mean? Because I couldn't afford drinks. And you'd recycle the bottles? Uh, no, basically I'd pick glasses up for the pub. Okay. So I'd clean tables. Basically. Okay, got it. Okay. And um Are you like a bus boy. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah, okay. And 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 she'd be freaking out that I was out all the time and that like I kind of wouldn't clean my room and she kept putting like candles in my room just to kind of force me to pick up my clothes. I was like, listen, I'm busy, all right? I'm busy kind of being me and just exploring. And um and then yeah, after that I got a job. Were you still then, making music? Oh yeah, completely. I was always making music and she used to hate it. 
I used to hate it because she used to hate it. I'd be playing guitar and she'd be like, can you turn that racket off? I love you, Marge, if you're watching this, by the way. She's a legend. Do you guys still talk? Um, no, but I, I probably will, like, go back to the house and cry. Yeah. Um, I remember, like, she had these cats and I got really bad asthma and they'd be on my bed and I'd, like, I have a fur ball, find a fur ball in my sheets and be like, oh no. So that was my first experience, like city life. You oh, know what you I mean? gotta go back there and shoot a music video there. Oh, or completely. Just margin the cats. And she used to make lasagna, like this big, thick lasagna all the time. And I was skint because I'd spend my money on like drinks and I don't know what, what you do when, when you 16. move down to the city at 16. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, yeah, man, I'd always, I'd just live off uh, lasagna because I'd be fucking skin breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'd be like eating this lasagna that was so like gloopy and shit. It was and crazy. where'd you go after after you left Marge? Um, I, I kind of, I was like at a backpack. I was kind of out, uh, couch surfing a little bit. Like I remember, I kind of was staying with my girlfriend at the time because I had no money. I was just like shit. You know what I mean? And that was just kind of like... It gets like that sometimes. Yeah, I was just it like... like it was kind of it was kind of bad and and I don't know, I would just kind of pay for a food and and then she was just so nice. She was just like, no, yeah, come stay with me because it was either that or move home. And mm -hmm. she was like, just come stay with me. And it was crazy because as it like, it's so hard to get off the ground. You know what I mean? As a musician, 100%. it's so hard to get off the ground. Man, it like... It took what felt like, I mean, it literally took like six years just to even start a mu you know, to like Completely. start a music project for me. Completely. It's just, it's that thing where you just, you know what you want to do, but you almost feel like there's no one out there that can help you or you I get excited about- I thought that only got record deals in, in movies. Yeah, dude. Literally. In the UK- I was like, this doesn't happen. In the UK, nobody wanted to know me. Nobody at all. I remember like playing, and that was after I got a management company. You know what I mean? When that was hard enough, because it's so weird. Like you, you have this outlet and you get excited about opportunities that don't materialize. You're mm -hmm. like, I met this person today. He works at, interns at a management company. And then it turns out that they're a bit full of shit. And then, oh, I met another person. And you, and you get these hopes that just kind of get beaten back down. And you almost kind of want to give up, but at the moment when you want to give up, you meet someone who actually kind of does something of value to your career. Do you know what I mean? And I don't know, I met this this, this guy called Thomas Army and Declan Morell. And um, and these guys are just like, we love, we love what, they saw me like on playing an acoustic night, jumping on top of the speakers. Do you know what I mean? I was writing, I was very- Very on brand. Yeah, very on completely. Brand. Because all these idiots who- were meeting me prior to that. We're just like, okay, man, you got, you can't be writing political music. You can't be writing about that because no, it's not going to get played on the radio. And I was like, oh man. And after you get told that by people who actually don't know what they're talking about, you kind of start to believe it. And then I was like writing shitty music, jumping off speakers, and and the and the management company were just like Thomas and Det were just kind of like, this doesn't add up. It's like you're trying to be Johnny Rotten out of Sex Pistols meets, I don't know, Cliff Richard. Mm. You know what I mean? And it was just like, <laughs> fuck that. And I don't know. Then they just kind of helped me just talk about what I wanted to talk about and just kind of uplifted me a little bit. You know How'd I mean? you first respond to that, to that criticism? Did you, did yeah, you reject at first, it? Oh yeah, bro, I remember, I remember they sent me down to a producer um, called Matty Schwartz and I walked downstairs, uh, who did the first, 20, did 21st Century Liability with me. And I walked downstairs and this thing and played in my kind of, I don't know, this pop music that had about as much charisma as a pint of water. And he just looked at me, he was like, I can't help you, you need to get out. You're a, you, you, you sound like Ed Sheeran and he's doing it better than you. And I was like, Wow, you just crushed my soul. And at first I was like, fuck you, what do you know? You're you're like, what do you know? But then I kind of went in my head, I was like, dude, he's right. I'm I'm writing this music that that is so similar to people in that lane, and they're just doing it ten times better than me because that's what is authentic to them. Yeah. And then I just kind of locked myself in a in a room for months and just scribbled and listened to what I loved growing up and then just kind of just got soaked in it and it just kind of came out the other end and Youngblood was born. 
Are you hearing like similar stories, you know, from your fans now that are like looking, I mean, you're like laying the blueprint for these kids. Yeah. You know, are they coming it's, up to you? That's like, what's I, mental. And that's what kind of the new music's about, dude. It's like the tattoos, like all the black arts and stuff is mental, but. You said black hearts? Yes. Yes. BHC baby, yes man. Travis is in. I'm in. Travis is in the BHC. I'm in, baby. Yeah, and um, and that's it, man. It was just the stories, the connection that I have to my fan base is what kind of keeps me going and what kind of keeps my blinkers on. It's so easy to look around what everyone else is doing in in kind of life, not just in music. If I was like wanting to start a business or I wanted to be an actor or I wanted to be a makeup artist or something. It's so easy to look at everyone else's, what everyone else is doing. But the connection with them is the the thing that's real. That's real. You know what I mean? That's a thing that in, in, in a, in a, in my head, I have so much kind of stuff that's sabotaging like my thoughts sabotage me a lot i'm the biggest self-sabotage dude it's crazy do you know what i mean it's like I'm my own biggest critic and but here's the thing i feel like that's also worked out in my benefit you know yeah a lot completely be, but i'm a bully i'm a huge bully to myself yeah. so i have like a i have like a high uh just like a high quality like i need to, to be outputting shit at a high quality or i'll just like tear myself down yeah man and it's it's weird it's just like i'll have an idea and i think it's sick and then half an hour later i'll hate it and i'm like i'm the worst thing in the world and then i'll love it again <laughs> and it's like nah i'm terrible i'm really bad and it's just like it's so hard to differentiate if it's actually bad or if it's the part of my heart that just hates itself that much it's just trying to c inflict pain on me you know what i mean it's like what I, have you ever had an idea that you've told yourself was bad that turned out to be amazing yes okay so see so it's hard to like you have to doubt it you Dude, have to question it completely you have to you have to it's just part of human nature and biology you know but it's it's hard sometimes because it hurts, you know what I mean? And it's and it's hard to get out of that place sometimes. Sometimes you kind of feel like your head's going to crush itself. Mm. And it's hard to get out of that, that state of mind in a way that you convince yourself it's real and true, not like I'm just putting on a brave face. Because you can't lie to yourself. You can lie to everyone else, but you cannot lie to yourself. Cause you know you're lying to yourself. He's like, yeah, man, I, I feel good about that. It's like unless you're fucking delusional. Unless you're yeah. fucking delusional. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But there's that little fucking voice in your stomach that's like, you're a liar. You're a liar, dude. You're a liar, and you're lying to yourself. And you like can suppress it. I've been that dude many times. Yeah, same. And you yeah. can suppress it at the bottom of your stomach for so long. But then sometimes you just need a good cry. Do you know what I mean? To get that thing out and just be like, I am a liar. I am a liar. You know what I mean? <laughs> You just schedule the cries in. Yeah, just like, like occasionally. Yeah. If you're feeling bad, have a good cry now, I dare you. <laughs> just bring it on. Just put on Marley and me or something. What's been the biggest adjustment for you coming from the UK to, to the States? Oh. Because you've been spending a lot of time here. Yeah, man. I couldn't wait to come out here. Everything's just so sick. It's like so much like shinier. You're, I mean, dude, you're proper LA now. Like you showed up with like bags from Maxfield and stuff. You got this oh, shit bro, on lock. It's terrible. Yeah. It's really bad, man. It's like, I need to get back to London in the, <laughs> in the, in the snow. You know what I mean? Um, I love America. You know what I mean? I think the UK is always going to be integral to kind of who I am. You know what I mean? Cause I'm from there and I'm such like a patriot or whatever. If you want, I'm proud to be from the UK, but I love America. I just love everywhere. Like, this year, like, I've been to Australia and fucking all across Europe, South America. It's like, I get to go across the world and play music and shit for, yeah. and, and spread my message. And, and at the end of the day, man, like, I always say, and I always say this to my boys, like, uh, as, as my musicians, we just like, if it ever becomes anything more than me and my two best mates going across to places like we'd never think we'd go to and playing shit and spreading a message that we want to spread and connecting to people just genuinely connecting to people in a real way then we're in fucking big trouble mm. you know what i mean that's just kind of it everyone's always like yeah man what what is it i'm just like that and if it I, we want it to grow of course and reach as many people as we want but we just want to be real so you've toured with your two best friends the whole time you've been yes. doing this yes adam and mikey from glasgow glasgow wow in scotland 
if no one knows where Glasgow is. <laughs> <laughs> and they've been with you from the beginning? Yeah, right from the beginning. Brother, we shared a two-bedroom council flat in Clapham. Adam slept in the front room. I understood like 75% Sorry, of that. Sorry, we, we <laughs> shared. <laughs> it's like a PJ. It's like a PJ. Okay, so it's like, it's very small. Tiny. It's like literally the flat was probably about the size, like the of, this size room. of this room. Okay. Yeah, I'm not even lying. Three of you in there? Three of us. Wow. Three of us. It was crazy. And how'd you guys meet? Um, In London, Adam had moved down. I remember Adam kind of went through a really hard time at home. You know, I mean, he kind of had a realization that he was kind of, he kind of figured out depression and anxiety for the first time. And when you find that in a place where you cannot, you don't have room to grow because almost your life's mapped out in front of you and you can't stray from the path that's set out, can't do anything, about, do anything yeah. about you. It kind of sends you into a really dark wormhole. We've all had it. You know what I mean? Everyone's had it. And I think it's your choice on if you want to remain there or you want to get the fuck out. You know what I mean? And in Adam's case, he got the fuck out. It was like... His kind of mum was like, you got to get out of where you're from. We gotta, you got to go to London. you got to go somewhere. you got to go to university and do something. And within two weeks of moving to London, we met and instantly connected on music. And I don't know, he kind of came from a very similar mindset to me. Um, and I don't know, it just, we just kind of became so integral to each other's souls. I think when you're, both figuring out shit about yourself and and going through a coming of age period, you latch on to something that's that is going through a similar thing to you. Like that's that, that's why like I fell in love with Eminem as a as a kid because he, in his music he was going through the same thing as I was. You know what I mean? And I think that's always what's so amazing when fans or whatever or people listen to my music go like, how did you know what I'm thinking and you never even met me? Mm. And I just go, fuck, man, because that's how I was with with artists that I loved. And me and Adam had that. We shared that. My guitar player very, very, very apparently when we first met because we were both going through the same shit and, and we just kind of latched onto each other. No time like ad time. Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by the ADHD merch store. Hit up fanjoy.co slash ADHD. Get yourself some mugs. Get yourself some sweats, some sweaters, some phone cases. Show your support of the pod. Today's episode of this podcast is also brought to you by Blinkist. Uh, in today's age, it can be hard to find time to sit down and learn more. It's not easy when social media can be so addictive and time-consuming, so you may think you don't have time to read a book or to develop yourself, but there is an app I highly recommend. It's called Blinkist. You've heard me talk about it on this podcast before. They've sponsored this podcast multiple times. Blinkist is the only app that takes the best key takeaways, the need-to-know info from thousands of nonfiction books and condenses them down into just 15 minutes so you can read or listen to it. Eight million people are using Blinkist right now. It has a massive and growing library from self-help business health to history books. I like Blinkist because in less than 15 minutes, I can learn something new when I'm driving to work or when I'm driving to this podcast. I can finish a book that I've been, you know, trying to cross off my, my list for a long time. Um, I've read and listened to these books and I highly recommend that you check them out as well. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, Getting Things Done, How to Win Friends and Influence People, The Power of Habits and The Four Hour Work Week. You can go to Blinkist right now and check out all of those books. Right now, for a limited time, Blinkist has a special offer just for ADHD listeners. Go to Blinkist.com slash ADHD to start your free seven-day trial. That's Blinkist, spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T. Blinkist.com slash ADHD to start your free seven-day trial. Blinkist.com slash ADHD. Does that trip you out that, that you become a, a whole nother generation's, like, escape? Dude, because I know the shit that I grew up on and like, you know, I mean, I can hear records to this day and I'll remember, you know, remember something from, from sixth grade, you know, and like, yeah. does, does that trip you? Like, is it it's, almost yeah, it's like com- a responsibility? It's crazy. I mean, I don't, we don't see it as, a res- I don't know if I see it as a responsibility. Obviously it kind of, it can get a lot because you have to be careful because you have to stay true to yourself and not kind of play into what other people want. You know what I mean? Because as long as you are being truthful, that's how you relate to people, I think. that's As long as you've been real, it will resonate. You know what I mean? I think that's kind of... you. I, I think it's very scary because a lot of kind of... There's some stuff, especially in music right now, people talking about mental health because it's trendy. 
You know what I mean? As opposed to actually it coming from we a real place. We talked about this. We FaceTime. You, yeah, we, we exactly. talked about this for like, yeah, 20 minutes. Uh, I remember I, we had this conversation before where like depression is is a hashtag and like it's-, it's Completely. You know, and it's a song title. Yeah, and, and I think you can tell. You can tell the difference. People ain't stupid. You know what I mean? I think right now, like, if you genuinely have felt these emotions and you genuinely can- can talk about it in a way that's real. People who have felt that will relate to it. If you kind of put in on a show, you can tell that because it's not real. You know what I mean? I think anything that comes from an authentic place will remain authentic because it is authentic, you know? And yeah, it was it was kind of crazy, like going back to kind of meeting my boys and and just having having those those guys around me. It was it was weird. It was just a weird kind of belonging that you can you don't feel and unless you find your people. And yeah. I think that's what's kind of crazy about Youngwood is like I wanted to build a community of people that here yeah, you're allowed to, to 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 live in and be yourself in freely. You know what I mean? That's that's what I wanted to do because I never had that when I was growing up and I so desperately seeked it. I was always kind of trying to put on a face or whatever or fit into a fit into a group. You know what I mean? And and I was kind of lit I know it sounds dark as fuck, but I was like living a lie through high school. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? LaCroix got me burping. Um <laughs> LaCroix, bruv like someone always told me like LaCroix is like sparkling water yet someone else is shouting a flavor at you from the other room so it's like it's like sparkling water it's like mango it's like what I, yeah okay i get it mm. i get it i get it yeah quick 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 fucking break oh, a little quick quick lacroix break. <laughs> I, I feel like post malone just you know put just ruined lacroix yeah. i feel like i feel like like now that's why it's sold out every time i go to the fucking grocery store yeah bro, it's crazy i can't even post made it anymore yeah i know it's fucked the last bro. three times they just they're all out i remember as i we first came on tour in America and I was in a dressing room I was like what's this and I opened it I thought it was gonna be like fuck sick man it's gonna be like lime soda taste it I was like this is shit <laughs> I was like what is this it's like 2% lime yeah. soda yeah it? I was just like oh man I can't wait to try this tasty green lime soda because the packaging looks sick and it's America and everyone lives off sugar it's gonna be great and it's like fuck man it tastes like I don't know fucking you know what you need to do is you need to go uh, you need to get some like exotic pop it's like it's this soda company that like finds all these rare sodas from all across like the completely, world. and uh, they just got like they got vintage shit like like I I don't think you did you guys have surge when you were a kid? surge no we had Tizer have you ever had Tizer no mate it's crazy this Tizer guy I remember the advert it was this cup with no head it was kind of pretty fucked up actually it was like on the thing it was like yeah <laughs> and it was like. It's kind of giving me like PTSD a little bit. Really? <laughs> Watching it on the TV, I was like, as a kid, like, ah, what the fuck is this? You drank it though. Oh, I drank it. Yeah, you <laughs> <but> fuck yeah, <laughs> I drank it. You bought it by the I you bought, bought cases yeah, of it. Cases. I, I bathed in it. <laughs> <laughs> I drank a shit ton of Mountain Dew when I was a kid. Oh, bro, like, I remember when Mountain Dew first came to the, uh, to, to the UK, I was like, oh, man, I feel so American. Really? Oh yeah, I was drinking. I was like, "Man, do man, I'm gonna fucking play some b-ball." It was crazy. I was like, "Yo, well, your American accent's really good, dude. You like it?" Yeah. It's like, but fucking LA boy, what? Like, that's, <laughs> that's fire, bro, bro. Like, your shit is fire. <laughs> yo, yo, do you play guitar? That's hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, it's okay. Is it cool? It's hard. Oh it's hard. My God. <laughs> do you ever just do you ever just flip that accent on? Always, man. It's yeah, like literally like my mates. Like, I always do it in front of my girlfriend. She's like, ah, that scares me. I'm just like, yo, what's up? And you do it so good. I'm just like, yo, what's up? What's yo, up? yo, I'm Dominic. It's like, oh what the fuck? So, yeah, it's Young Bleezy. <laughs> <laughs> Export to SoundCloud. Yo, all right. God damn, I felt like I had someone sitting different sitting across yeah. from me right there. Do you got any hobbies, dude, besides music? Um, I like football. I like soccer. Yeah, I was going to say, which kind of, you like your, like, f proper football. Yeah, pro like, proper football. Um, I kind of followed that, like, as a kid, man, like, either Leeds United or Doncaster Rovers, depending which member of the family I'm talking to. Okay. Um, And then, yeah, man, I, so I kind of, like, loved acting. I used to be a dancer. For real? Yeah, for real, bro. What kind of Like, Billy Elliot shit. <laughs> 
Seriously. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, I was like, woo, that's tight. That's probably why you have incredible stage presence. Oh, bro, just jumping up and down, man. Everyone's like, how do you how do you jump that I am just like fucking dancing? Is it nostalgic for you to like be up be, like be up on stage? But like, I mean, it's it's you know, you're you're performing just in a different oh, capacity. Yeah, man. I completely I still you work that shit in yeah, your Yeah, I still wear a fucking tutu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Yo, I showed my girlfriend your fucking oh, because she's like, you know, who do you have on the podcast today? I'm like, oh, young blood. And she she like was like, oh, let me check out, you know, check this kid out. And um, she looked at you, and you're you have this photo where you're literally, I think in you're a dress. in a skirt, yeah, you're in yeah, a dress. completely. Uh, and she's like, I like him, totally, bro. I, like it's him. Just, I hate that. That's what I'm saying. Like, like fuck the boundaries, man. Completely, it's like it's such an outdated way of living. And I feel sexy as fucking a dress. Yeah, hey man, it's a great I love photo. It. Do you know what I mean? I fucking love wearing a dress. It's weird. I but, love it. But, but like, why is it weird? That's what the thing. You know what I mean? I, like, I talk to people, and it's like it's a bit odd, isn't it? I'm like, why is it odd? Why is it odd? Because some people hit you up after you posted it. Yeah, sometimes I like, just like, why did you do that? I'm like, why? Why is it weird? You know what I mean? Why is it weird? Why is it odd? Because all fucking clothes are are a boundary that fucking society put on us, isn't it? To just be like, what fucking genitals have you got? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I fucking feel sexy in a dress. I'm gonna wear a dress. <laughs> <laughs> How many dresses do, would you say you own? Um, I, I got a couple nineties. Okay, but that's right. <laughs> Not too many dresses. If you want to send me some dresses, um, follow me on Instagram and hit the email button and send me some dresses. Yeah, Fashion Nova's about to be Fashion here. Nova, like <laughs> boohoo. <laughs> Yo, girl, what's up? You're about to be the fucking the new the new Instagram influencer for fucking Fashion Nova, in it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like? Did, did you grow up like skateboarding or did you? Um, yeah, I mean, I grew. I remember going to um, a skate park all the time. Um, but I fucked my ankle up and it and it made me scared forever. Do you know when you fucking do something? Dude, it, I was on crutches for, I think, like six... I was on crutches for six weeks last year. Oh, uh, dude, same. Really? Oh, Legit, yeah, I remember. I my ankle on tall. Uh, I think... Yeah, you came in on crutches uh, when you did my Beats I 1 did, show. Yes, the first, I, I think that might might have been the first time we yeah, met. Yeah, dude. And it was like... It was, it was just hard as hell. I, me I remember I was like on stage in Houston and I got these creepers... These two inch and platforms. You rolled your ankle, huh? Yeah, and I just and I just like hit That's the ground, it. snapped my ankle on stage, and then just did the rest of the tour in a wheelchair. How long were you in a cast for? Um, I was in a cast for like because I remember I had ACL the next day. Wait, yeah, Austin City Austin Limits. City Limits Festival. Austin City Limits Festival the next day, and I had a show in Houston, and I broke my broke my. Um, Broke my foot. And you broke I'm your foot mid-show. Mid-show. And you finished playing the Completely. show. Completely. And I did a meet and greet afterwards. Yeah. Fuck the system. <laughs> um, I was just like, get, <laughs> I, I was just like, get me a pint. There's literally a thing. I was like, I finished California and go, I think I've broke my ankle. Oh, it's all right. Pass me a guitar. Will someone get me a beer? There's literally that footage online. And um, finished the show, did a meet and greet afterwards, went to A&E, uh, went to the ER the ER and um, he put me in a splint in a cast. I was like, right, I got to be in Austin on stage in nine hours. And he's like, that's probably not a good idea. I was like, fuck off. Give me some paracetamol, uh, give me some uh, paracetamol, Tylenol. And just got in a car, slept in a car, went on stage, two Red Bulls, bish, bash, bosh in a wheelchair. There's my guitar tech, like just pushing me around in a wheelchair. It was sick. You're a madman. Oh, mental. ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> when you snap your fucking ankle, dude, mid song, like what's going through your head? I was like, I think I've broke my ankle. Are I you, know it's do obvious. you feel it? Yeah, I was like, I know. It's okay, so the adrenaline oh, from like being on stage, the playing. adrenaline, like I couldn't put my put weight on it. I went, I jumped on it, went, oh, and then I looked down at my foot, and my foot was massive. I'd like a two golf balls in and inside my ankle. I was like, nah, man, that's crazy, and. um and yeah, I, I remember going, I know it sounds really simple, but I think I've broke my ankle. That's all that was going through my head. Mm -hmm. I think I've broke my ankle. I've definitely broke my ankle. Fuck, this really hurts. I've broke my ankle. Get me a beer. Let's carry on. That's what went through my head. Legend. You know, it's crazy. Oh, you know, I mean, there's, there's one, th like, there's just... There's something about live shows where something inevitably is going to go wrong, right? And, like, you know, you watch, like, Miguel at, uh, I think it was, like, the Grammys where he tries to jump over the stage. Yeah. Oh, dude. You know, I, dude, I, I've, that was... like, just watching people get dude, fucked I remember, up on stage. Did you see when, um, 
Did you see the iHeartRadio Awards when we played 11 Minutes? No. I kind of had to, we did this, me, Travis and Halsey, we um, did this radio show and Halsey came, um, Ash Halsey came out of Without Me into 11 Minutes and Travis just comes in playing the drums and on this stupid, on this massive fucking crazy riser. And I had to jump out of the crowd and do like a massive kick. And I was just like, fuck me, man. If I get this wrong, I'm going to literally do a Miguel at the Grammys. That like one of my first big TV performances and I fucked it. You know what I mean? It's so funny. I literally, I remember the security guard. I was in the crowd. I started the crowd, this radio show. And there's just me like, what the fuck's going on? I'm in the crowd and I'm like, uh, speaking to the security guy, I'm going like, I've got to, I've got to get on stage. And he's like, no. I'm like, I have a guitar in my hand. Yeah, he thought I've you got just a, brought that would, in from yeah, the fucking Yeah, I was like, yeah, I fucking, I've just brought it from fucking, I've got in-ear monitors and a guitar in my hand. like, you can't go on stage. I'm like, um, I'm literally about to miss my cue in 10 seconds. He's like, nah, 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 nah. I'm like, I have a guitar in my hand. And then like someone from the crowd was like, dude, that's young blood. And he's like, oh. I'm like, oh, thanks. The guy almost ruined the whole fucking yeah, show. Yeah, I would just been like, just stood in the crowd, just been like close up with me, like, eh, great. Funny though, I was just like, come on, you fucker, let me on. He was like, nah, I was like, all right, I just brought his guitar for fun, didn't I? Today's episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Hymns, another previous sponsor. Hymns is a new wellness brand for men. The problem is that 66% of men are gonna lose their hair by 35. And it's a lot harder to do something about it once you've already lost it. But there is a solution with 4 It's a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness, like dick pills, uh, and all of that for men. Uh, thanks to science, baldness can now be optional. Hims connects you with real doctors and medical-grade solutions to treat hair loss. No waiting room, no awkward in-person doctor visits, and you can save hours by going to 4 It's easy. You answer a few quick questions. Your doctor will review your case and can prescribe you immediately. Products are shipped directly and discreetly to your door. Order now. My listeners get a trial month of Hims for just $5 today, right now while supplies last. See website for full details and safety information. This would normally cost you hundreds if you went to the doctor or any pharmacy, but you can go to 4 slash ADHD. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash ADHD. 4 dot com slash A-D-H-D. Dude, I, I remember I, I was playing Warp Tour and the way that they set okay, the stages shout out up, to Warp Tour. You play Warp Tour. Warp Tour, yeah. So you know how they set up the stages where it's like, you know, there'll be one band that's playing here and another stage over there that's Completely. setting up. So I had a set and the band that was setting up was a metal band. Oh, like de but like death metal. Death. Rah, exactly. Hell, yo. Which like, dude, I grew up in that fucking shit, right? Same. Uh Anyways, these kids, the, the I mean, so there's like 2,000 just fucking metalheads, right? Like, and they fucking hate, they hate me yeah, and my Yeah, dude, dude, I get that. Like, <laughs> anything like you bring in 808s, it's yeah. like sacrilegious. Bro, you fucking suck. Dude, that's not fucking rock. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, And so it's like my fans kind of versus like these like metalheads and um, it's raining and, you know, it's uh, it's outdoors. Completely. That festival is. And, uh... And so they're like chanting and my fans are chanting. And so like, I kind of like, I, I was, I was, I was like kind of anti antagonizing it. And so I'll, I never felt more dumb in my life, but I fucking, I flipped them off and I jump off of the drums and the stage is wet and I eat shit. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> no! In no! Front of, dude, it's like four or five thousand people. Oh, it was, it, and it was just like a war, and everyone just like, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and your fans are just like, "Fuck, we Yo, can't follow I him lost, now." I lost the battle. Yeah, it's but fine. We but won the, you, we you won, won the, the war. war. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I, and and it was cool <laughs> because the metal band that whose fans it was, they came up to to me after the set. And we're like, "Yo, man, sorry, our fans suck, dude." Like, da -da -da -da. like you know, we're cool though, right? And I was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Oh, they're dope." Yeah, <laughs> but it's all about that, man. There's not enough fucking naughtiness in rock, like in music right now. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's got to be a bit more naughty. A bit more naughty. You feel like that music is missing that? I think so. I think sometimes it can it can be. Do you know what I mean? I think I don't know. It might just be a different time. You were just with Marilyn Manson and and some some other legends. Oh not yeah, too long ago. We, yeah, we just uh, I would I mean I didn't meet him. It was so funny. Um, we were at Machine Gun Kelly's house and he, and Marilyn Manson gave Machine Gun Kelly a, a dildo. dildo of himself. Yeah. So I wasn't with Marilyn Manson. I didn't see him. I did see Marilyn Manson's dildo, dildo though. Okay. I love how we're saying dildo <laughs> at, the, at the same time. And it's literally a picture of, like me. He actually bought ad space on this podcast. Oh really? No, I mean, but he might. Oh, 
he might. He might. Fuck, so let's now. just, we got to talk he's, about. He's opening a dildo company. Let's just talk about it nicely and, you know. Yeah, Because he probably listens. Oh, yeah, dude. I fucking love, bro. <laughs> I, like, I was, I was such a massive fucking inspiration to me growing up, Marilyn Manson. The dildo or Marilyn Manson? Marilyn Manson. Okay. I mean, yeah, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> But Marley Manson's dildo is kind of sick. It's like a dildo of himself. Would you ever make young blood dildos? Um, I don't know, man. Is there a demand for young blood dildos? <laughs> yeah. Everyone just in the room going, yeah. I'm going to make pildos. It's just ADHD dildos <laughs> in the shape of pills. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking Just man. get fucked by. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to say get fucked on it. That is crazy. Yeah. Uh, okay, next <laughs> More good ideas uh, You anyway. can get Pildos at uh, www.fanjoy.co Slash ADHD <laughs> You can't, but you can get some cool fucking merch Over yeah. there I think you've you've been the coolest guest to sit in Like you've sat in that chair the coolest way Thank, oh, thank you Combination man. of Everyone ways. kind of always like Fucking as a go at me for sitting like this You're like, you're gonna ruin my chairs But I don't know, there's something about sitting cross-legged I just feel like I would, but my legs are really long You have long legs, yeah. well that's sick yeah. I, want a, I want long legs <laughs> I ain't got fucking long legs. You know what's weird? This might be a weird thing to say. I'm really bad at like, uh, like I guess like height, you know, guessing Different, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you feel like you're like a really tall dude. Everyone says that. Yeah. At my meet and greet, so all the fans are like, you, you, you look bigger. I'm like, really? Yeah. I'm kind of not that tall. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not that tall. I'm just like, I don't know, fucking yay high. Like, I don't know. I'm not. It might be the creepers. I don't know. It might be the creepers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's it's so funny. I was literally in the studio last night tracking a vocal. Take me creepers off the the mic. I'm singing to the mic, and then it ends up like on my forehead. (laughs) It's so funny. (laughs) I'm just like shit. Don't you? Do you hate it? Is it okay? Do you take it as like a backhanded compliment when people are like, "Yo, you look better than online. You look better in real life." I don't know. I I, I'm just like. Did, have they said that to you? Oh yeah, man. Yeah. It's either both or it's like, oh, it's the worst one. It's like, you look better online. You're like, oh, they- <laughs> thanks so much. Thank you. And it's like, great. That's savage. It's great. It's, it's savage, but I love it, man. My fans are savage, but they're fucking hilarious. Like, my, that, they're so fucking funny. And I just love it when they give me shit sometimes. What's so sick is the no, if I, if I've like posted something or done something out of anxiety or late, it's like I post a, a like I'll be asleep when a song will come out. And I'll post it on my Instagram two hours later. And they're just like, are you fucking late? And I'm like, "Mm, I like you. You know what I mean? It's crazy. They just launched full-blown investigations. Oh, yeah, flat out. I know that that's how uh, my girlfriend's fans found out that we were dating. Because she wore a dress to some event. And then I posted something on my Instagram and the dress was in the back of my car. Oh yeah, dude. It's, like, it's it, dude. And they, oh, they just, put oh, together this wear, fucking chart. You kind of wear like me and me and our last, we kind of wear this. We're like, I don't know what I wear dresses. She wears <laughs> fucking my suit. See, I dude, I just need to post a couple Instagram photos in a dress. Dude, so people can stop questioning. It's like, it's like the shit. modern, the modern way, man. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like just you and sh- young thug sh- would get along. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah, bro. Of course, man. Dude. Fucking dude. I love that guy, man. I fucking, I think he's dope. Jeffrey. Yeah, bro. He's fucking, it's a fucking Stella, Stella. But I, that's what I'm saying. Like the modern way, man. Like fucking wear each other's clothes in a relationship. Tight as fuck. Madeline's like five foot and I'm six foot. She wears my clothes, but it's Tight. very hard to fit hers. I think you look sick in a crop top. You think? Yeah. Even one that's like, like probably like five sizes too small. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fucking 80s hair I feel metal, like her baby. sweatpants can fit like one of my legs. Tight. You know? I love it. Then do it. Just wear two different ones. Yeah, bro, it's like a crop top. You look 80s hair metal as fuck. <laughs> Be like Van Halen. I don't think I've ever worn a belly shirt. I've never worn a belly shirt. I don't think I've ever worn a belly shirt. I would like to wear a belly shirt now you said it. I kind of like, I'm like that. It's like, don't do something dumb. And my head just goes, do it, do it. Or it's like, when it's like, I do an interview, it's like, don't swear. My head just like, fuck, 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 say fuck, say fuck, say fuck, say fuck. Dude, when I used to do radio uh, interviews and I'd like have to go around on press tours and shit, I'd have to write, don't cuss on a big piece of paper yeah, and yeah. keep it up in front of my head. Yeah. Just so when I was talking, I wouldn't be like, fuck shit. Yeah, dude. It's like, it's just a switch. It's just like, my head's just, again, just trying to self-sabotage. It's like, fuck it up, dumb. I've gotten way better. I've gotten way better at the cussing thing, but um, yeah, but that's why I like doing Same, this. to be honest. If it's in the back of my head, I'm just like, kind of like, you just do that many interviews, you kind of just f- figure it out. 
Do you ever watch old interviews and uh, like just and like, cringe like fuck? Yeah. yeah, I'm like, ugh. Like, what are you doing with your hands? I'm like, I'll probably like watch this and be like, what are you doing with your hands? What are you doing with your fucking hands? I notice I cut I cut people off a lot. Oh, same, yeah. same. Probably when we watch this back, it's gonna be like. Ah, blah, 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 blah. That's why I was so excited to have you because I feel like you know you're like you fucking embody this shit. It's dude. just like. Bah. Yeah. It's like if I cut you off, I'm sorry. <laughs> And it's mutual, mutual apologies. Did you ever take anything for ADHD? Nah, I tried to, I think they tried to put me on like, I don't know. Um, but then my mum was just like, nah, fuck that. Cause I was a bit of a zombie. Or you something. smoke weed or anything? I smoke weed sometimes, yeah. I like to, but some, I don't know. I like, I like having a couple of beers. It kind of calms me down. But if I have weed, it kind of centers me a little bit. But sometimes I'm a bit, the problem is man, I've, I've got ADHD, but I'm a control freak as well. So it's like, if I'm, I smoke weed, I'm out of control. Mm. So it's a fucking happy medium. I feel like that. I feel like weed has been the one thing though that's really it's definitely helped me focus on certain things. Like yeah. when I need to like buckle down and shit. Uh but it also it's I mean I it freak I don't know. I get fucking paranoid sometimes. Yeah, it's kinda it's kinda weird, man. I don't know. And it's fucking like sometimes smoking fucks my voice as well. I got asthma. I love smoking. Like I like cigars. I don't know why. It's like small fucking little cigars. You cigar. like like smoking like cigars. I like small ones. Okay. Not like a big fat fucking, <laughs> not a Mom, big fat. Not like a mafia cigar. Not a big fat fucking, I mean, I should do that. would be tight as fuck. You know, young buddy. <laughs> brother, I remember having this game as a thing. You just tell like, as a joke in your friend group, you just tell lies about, like little white lies about your friends. It's just like. It was a you joke? Know, you know, it's, a joke? it's like, you know, Travis Mills, bro. He only wears green underpants. Like, I only wears green underpants. Isn't that weird? And people are just like, really? And he's like, and I'm like, yeah. Isn't that fucking Yo, crazy. You know, uh, you know, Youngblood, you know, that, that <laughs> dude, Dom, dude only smokes seven inch cigars. <laughs> and people are like, what? Seven you, plus, dude. And it's just like, you just tell like little white lies as a joke. And it's just like fucking just dab. It's like, so what, basically like when Travis Mills is discovering new music, I know he's like kind of, he only listens to cassette tapes. You've got to send him just cassette tapes, but they've got to be blue and marked with a green Sharpie with a star under the left corner. And people are just like, what, really? Damn, I need to get a cassette player. Bro, yeah, bro, I fucking... That's a lie. I have my first four track recorder that I've ever really? had. I still have it. You got, mate, I never had that. I think I'm a, I think kind of I'll just skip that. Skip that four track phase. I, I kind of like, I'd garage band for as long as I can remember. So that, I had a four track recorder before I got a MacBook. Yeah. And uh, I never made anything cool on four track recorder. It was awful. Dude, it'd be so tight though. So like, what did you do? You just like press record on four track. So like, yeah, you, I'd literally go to Radio Shack and I'd buy a fucking cassette, like a blank cassette. You put it in there and then it had inputs. Uh, and so you'd plug in a guitar and then, you know, you could plug in a mic and you can record one by one or you can record four at the same time. Did you do a click track? How do you run a click track? Or you, you can't. You just put one in your ear. I, I, I don't, I, I didn't, I don't know. I was like 14. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, crazy. Ha, I didn't have like a metric. Keeps That's like, what I'm saying. There's no, you can't quantize <laughs> shit. And like, if you wanted to record drums, you could put like one room Oh yeah, mic, flat, but, you that, know? That, I remember when like Travis Barker came in on 11 minutes and he just played it the whole way through. And obviously it's so funny now because you like, yeah, fuck it. Play it for a loop. And everyone's like, people don't say to loop shit. People loop shit. It's normal. And, but Travis Barker just didn't loop it. Just one take on the grid every time. I'm like, you fucker, that's insane. That's like, incredible. Yeah, dude, it's mad. It's fucking mad. Fucking mad. It's like... I have some cool Travis Barker stories. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, because I, you know, he's from Corona. I'm from Riverside. Oh. So growing up, he was like a God to me. Uh, and then when I, you know, when I started popping with my music, we, we got linked up, um, and we got in the studio to get together. And around that time was the time that I started hanging out with Wiz Khalifa. Sick. And Wiz was like my favorite rapper, like, you know, since like before, like I popped off and then Blink was like my favorite band, period. Fuck, yeah. And when I was a kid, Travis's friend used to detail my dad's car. Uh, and he, uh, he would bring me like famous stars and strap stickers. I, dude, so when I was tight. 13, Travis Barker opened up a Wahoo's Tacos. It's a restaurant, okay? Yeah. He opened up a Wahoo's Tacos. Him and Mark Hoppus were at the opening. I fucking stood in line and got a Famous Stars and Straps skateboard autograph. So tight. I still have it at my fucking. That is crazy. House. Um, and yeah, he, he when fast forward, I'm hanging out with Wiz and Travis hits me. He's like, "Yo, you want to come?" It was it was Blink 182's last shows with Tom. Wow. And they're five. They're playing five nights. 
And um, and so we roll up and I got like, you know, the all access passes. I kept the passes and never gave them back. And I went all five nights. Wow. So like every night fucking stood on stage. They played a different song uh, on their encore every single night. And it was the last five yeah, shows Yeah, and just Tom. freaking, dude, that's crazy. It was fucking crazy. Dude, I bet it's crazy. I was going to go to that Huntington Pe- Beach the other night. Oh, was, yeah, the I Back to the Beach? Yeah, apparently it was, it was just like crazy. And I was like, I found out that day, but I was just like, I was knackered. But I was like, fuck. So I just played like anywhere in the state. And I was like, fuck. I missed it. Yeah, it was weird being on being there, like with because like I'd look over and I'd be like, okay, this is like my my music idol, you know, for like hip hop, and then yeah. like I'd be like, I'm on stage with Blink yeah, eighty two, dude, like, which I have their posters. In yeah, my exactly, room. dude. That's what's that's what's mental. That's kind of when like that, that bit of a moment when he was playing on a song that I wrote right? in my it's bedroom. It was like, just you like pinch yourself. I was just like, fuck. I remember, dude. Like talk about smoking weed. I remember we were in the studio and recording at Conway Studios in LA. And I was just like, okay, fuck, Travis Barker's coming. And I was like, fuck, you know. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> and I'd fucking toked half a joint. And like, Travis just comes in. I'm like, hi, Travis. What's up, man? You know what I mean? So I bet he was like, what a fucking stoner. And that's just not me whatsoever. But I was just like so nervous. I was like, <laughs> and Ash, Aussie looks at me and she's just like, dude, you just ch- toked that half, half that fucking joint. I'm like, fuck, I did. And now I'm freaking out. It's crazy. I think, yeah, that's the worst. Like when you just like get too high, you need to get unhigh. Yeah, unhigh. Like Mars bars, put some sugar in your system. Yeah. <laughs> but like my auntie's, my auntie's um, hot fiance is Dutch. And did you say your aunt's? My auntie's fiance. Your aunt's hot fiance? My auntie's husband, but oh, he's oh, hot as well. Oh, okay. My you're, auntie's you're, hot fiance. Your aunt's husband. He's fucking smoking up. <laughs> And uh, my aunt, my aunt is hot Mars fiance Mars? in school because obviously like cannabis has been legal in, in the Netherlands for for years and mushrooms and shit. So in school they're taught how to deal with things if you like to smoke too much weed or have a terrible trip on mushrooms. Oh, for real? Yeah, they're taught like high sugar content apparently. So like, if you're like having a bad trip on mushrooms and want to get out, fuck loads of Mars bars and a LucasAid apparently. <laughs> I was like, sick. I was like, I don't know. Or you just must love Mars bars. Sound advice. Sound advice. Please consult a health professional. Do not, you know, take any advice that you've heard on this podcast. We cannot promise the same results. <laughs> oh, do. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you working on now, dude? Um, new music, man. Loads yeah. of it. It's fucking great. I can't wait. Like, as I say, just, I'm just going to be releasing music all throughout the year and then kind of up to, uh, I just want to get a, Want to get more music out, reach more people, tour more. It's like I'm on tour till like next March already. I, and I can't believe like the US tour saw that so quick. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's just crazy. You know what I mean? It's, I just can't believe it. I just want to keep building the community and just reach as many people as I can. Just drop new music and do shit that people don't expect me to do. That's that's what is important about Youngblood. It's like I'll mix 15 different genres in one song, but I'll be probably holding a guitar through all of it, you know? Mm. That's very true. There's no lies in that previous statement. Um, dude, tell everyone where to check your shit out. Yeah, man. Um, go follow me on Instagram at Y-U-N-G-B-L-U-D, Youngblood. Youngblood. Double the U, double the flavor. <laughs> Is that your handle on every on, on every site? Yes, on every site, on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You're on TikTok? I don't know. I don't think, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I think I am. But I fucking that love shit. that, bro. It's I'm funny. Too old. I'm too that's old. what I thought. That's what I thought. No. But go on it, bro. I spend ages just laughing at people on TikTok. The things people do in life are just daft. Oh, I love the videos. When they pop up on my timeline, I'm. Oh, I they're just hilarious. Up. I just like see these Twitter feeds of TikTok videos and I'm just scrolling down. It's, it's like one of me and my girlfriend's favorite pastimes. Just, just going watch, on TikTok? I, no, just watching TikTok threads. Dude, I'm, if your fans knew probably like the amount of, of times like you just go on and just like watch the things that they make. Oh, yeah, they completely. They know they know I do. They yeah. know I do. Everyone just like he's watching. I, I see tweets. It's like he's watching. I like it. And they're like, we do it. We fucking knew it. Imagine like if that, but if Blink-182 could be like liking your shit when you're in sixth grade, like how that would have been. Yeah, dude, I was like, I'm freaking out. Yeah. I'll be like, oh my God. It's like when Mark Hoppus tweeted me, he was like, Youngblood, spell your name right. I was like, oh, sorry, Youngblood spelt right. 274 was taken. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. I was like, Youngblood spelt right. 274 was taken. Oh my God. 
Um, dude, thank you so much for coming and doing this. Thank you, man. Are you yeah. joking? You're the I love fucking you. man. You're the man. Yeah, I love you too. Um, Ski. Dude, amazing. Thank you. You're a legend. Good night. Okay. Good or good day. We'll just stop. Yeah. Whenever you're listening. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to let you go to the studio now. <laughs> Rock and roll, stop. It's everything.